Jones from San Diego County. We are on our exploration of parts of Southern California again. And so today we are starting at the Desert View Tower to explore Old Highway 80. Uh, it used to extend from Savannah, Georgia, all the way to San Diego, uh, but now has been mostly replaced with some of the newer highways. And so for a lot of our drive, we will end up uh, skirting along Interstate 8 as we head back to San Diego. Uh, let's get in the car and see what is in store for us. I believe there's a lot of old abandoned towns and things like that. And the weather out here right now is a little bit warm as you'd expect in the desert. So we're gonna hop in the car and cool on off. Less than a quarter of a mile from Desert View Tower, we've stopped at our first little waypoint here, Coyotes Flying Saucer Retrievals and Repair. Sure, if this is a big alien UFO saucer type territory, but if you're in need of some retrieval, stop by and ask for Coyote. been coyote we're not supposed to be here <laughs> and then just a few more feet down the road there is this old abandoned area here not sure if it's an old gas station or an old repair shop uh, but if you're gonna be walking around uh, in some of these old buildings and things like that make sure that you have a good pair of tennis shoes on there's a lot of broken glass and nails and then I also added on just an extra layer of sun protection today since it's quite sunny outside. Jacumba now and this is uh, the chimney that remains from the old hotel that used to stand here. Uh, I guess back in the day this was an area where the Hollywood would come to uh, relax and enjoy the hot springs that are in the area. Uh, there may still be uh, an old hot spring um, shell of a building that we'll be able to take a look at uh, but in terms of the Hollywood heyday sadly uh, it is no longer that way here in Jacumba. The sign behind us that we're about to walk to gives a little bit of the history of the uh, hot springs here in the area and then I think also maybe the bathhouse uh, behind it. So we're coming up to the Mexican border here. Hopefully we can see it on the left. We're probably, I don't know, we're like less than 100 yards away from it. You can't really see it from there, but it's about 100 yards. There's a little fence. I think that's a better picture. Or there we go. Now we can see it. That little fence over there. That's about the closest that we're going to get to the border here as we drive um, from there. So... Mexico is right over there. We 
we just passed through the town of Bankhead Springs, there really wasn't a place to stop and pull over. Um, for the most part, it looks like there's a bunch of residences, uh, not a lot left from when the town um, was kind of thriving. It does say in some of the notes that I have here, the town was named for Senator John H. Bankhead, and it was also home of the Hollywood silent film star Tallulah Bankhead, which was his daughter. Um, the house where she used to live had a little bit of a pink facade and I think we saw that as we drove by. Um, it also became a hotel later on and now it's uh, more of a private residence so couldn't really stop and uh, take a look and, and get pictures or anything like that. Uh, now we are back on the road and we're going to be heading to the town of Manzanita. of Manzanita we are at the candy cottage uh, and it says on the sign that they have been making homemade candy since 1921 let's go check it out Unfortunately, uh, the candy store is closed, so we'll have to pass on homemade candies for today. But if you stick your nose up close to the glass, you can smell the chocolate and the sweetness uh, through, and uh, it's unfortunate that it's closed. We believe this is the former homestead of Amos Buckman, for whom Buckman Springs was named. He bottled water in this area that was had a reddish hue from the iron content, but it also contained lithium. Uh, and they sold this bottled water for about 50 years, so people were drinking iron-filled lithium water. <music> saw a border patrol checkpoint uh, but it was on the opposite side of the road so we drove right past it uh, but just now we had our own experience going through border control um, they pretty much just slow you down it looked like they took a peek to see if there was anybody else in the car besides us and then we got waved on blog I was reading, it said that if you drive through Pine Valley, a stop at Frosty Burger uh, for a soft serve cone is a must. So we are now in line to indulge ourselves. Hi. Can I get a small cone dipped? So a vanilla dip? Villa, yeah. And then um, a small vanilla pack. That's it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. So I got my ice cream it started melting right away so i may think i'm going to eat it outside of the car because otherwise it's going to like really just get messy how's yours good i'm getting in the car so i don't burn anymore so mine is pretty tasty you have to eat it a little bit fast so that way it's not melting all over you although at the same time then you tend to get brain freeze so far so good i had some on my chin though like kelly just had the napkin off me because my hands are completely full. <laughs> is it worth it though? Well, it is because it's ice cream on a hot day. back home, but just the path to get back home. 
Overall, I would say that the trip is pretty fun. I think it ends up being about 40 or 50 miles that you're able to travel on um, from Desert View Tower to the town of Pine Valley. And the ice cream at the end was a nice conclusion to an otherwise warm day. Uh, what was your highlights? My favorite part of the trip, uh, ice cream was nice because that's, you know, on a hot day it was nice. Uh, but probably the favorite part was over at the Jacumba Springs uh, when we got to see the uh, the old um, springs, I guess the old building that was kind of burned down and we got to go in it and just take a look around. Uh, that was pretty uh, interesting. It was nice to be able to stop at a couple of places and just get in and stretch your legs out and just kind of, you know, read about uh, some of the history. So that was pretty cool. I don't know if I had one thing that was a favorite or one town that was a favorite. Uh, overall, I think just being able to go into some of those old buildings was what uh, did it for me. It's not too often that you really are allowed to explore um, in these kind of derelict buildings without it being considered trespassing. And uh, it seemed like these were kind of open for you to be able to do that and get a sense of the history of these towns um, that are no longer really here. So for me, I think that was kind of the, the fun adventure part of it today. Well, that does it, so we will see you on the next adventure. Bye. Bye.